Now you mentioned the tax cuts and we, uh, I accidentally skipped over this in the prep, but let's talk about the tax cuts because this is a thing that libertarians often say, Hey, we like this. This is great. This he was the biggest tax cutter in American history. We say that without ever fact checking and seeing if it was actually the largest tax. We just repeat the words of a politician and instead of actually looking at it. So the tax cuts and jobs act was the largest overhaul of the tax code in three decades and it created a single corporate tax rate of 21%. Now, the reason that uh, we oppose business taxes, business taxes are a double tax on the American citizen. There is, corporations are not people. We don't, we don't buy that. Corporations are created solely by the government, by the state. And the, uh, the corporate tax, when, when you tax a company, that money comes from three places, uh, potentially. You can cut shareholder value, a.k.a. the people that have invested in the company. And these businesses often want to be competitive in, uh, in the stock market to attract investors. So that's not going to happen. They can increase the cost of their goods, which they normally pass any business tax on to the consumer. So you are paying that with money that has already been taxed, which is why it's a double tax. But they can't raise their prices too high or they'll mark themselves out of competition. Or they can pay their employees less and give them less benefits. Guess which they choose to do, the bigger the corporate tax rate. And so once you cut the corporate tax rate as low as possible, businesses then have capital freed up to pay their employees more, to hire more employees, give them more benefits, invest in new projects, that then hire more people. And so when you cut the corporate tax rate, you increase employment and employment opportunity. And the across the board, you increase the standard of living for people. And so this was a good thing. We have, we have uh, not much in this episode to praise him on. So we will say that cutting the corporate tax rate from 30 something to 21% is a good thing. And it is why we saw a job, uh, a growth in jobs. Now, uh, the law. Now, many of the tax benefits set up to help individuals and families will expire in 2025. Uh, now, typically, what happens is they just get they get put back in place. They're never removed. Um, that's why they add these sunset provisions as a as a negotiating tactic to get the other side to allow allow it. But it always usually stays in place. H&R Block reports that the average tax cut for a family was approximately $1,200 based on returns from 2018. So you got $1,200 back, but you probably paid, I think the number was $900 in tariff taxes. So you you came out ahead with uh, 300 extra dollars. Um, so again, Trump shoots himself right in the foot. Trump vowed the $1.5 trillion in sweeping tax cuts he spearheaded in 2017. He did not spearhead it, by the way. Paul Ryan did, who had been looking for his, his chance to cut taxes forever. Uh, and Mitch McConnell spearheaded it. Donald Trump uh, weirdly stayed silent on Twitter to, to get this passed. That was his contribution, was not talking. Uh, 2017 wouldn't increase the federal deficit because they would pay for themselves through faster economic growth. The tax law projected to add $1.8 trillion to the deficit over the next decade, and any additional revenue brought in by economic growth would be offset by higher interest payments on a bigger national debt. So, yes, it is true that the extra economic growth will help offset those tax cuts, but because you have so much debt that we're adding consistently, it's a wash. If not, you're upside down. And so getting the, the debt under control again, we'll save all of us money and we'll maybe get more than $1,200 a year back in our money. Um, so that is, those are the details of the tax cut. So basically, largest or not largest tax cut in American history, it doesn't really matter. Thanks to tariffs and thanks to uh, the national debt, you didn't really come out ahead with the tax cut. Hey, you're muted. You came out behind, I think. I mean, there was... A lot of a lot of the good that we were hoping were going to come out of the tax cuts too for businesses, where they would give better wages to to people and hire more people. I mean, we were already on a trend of lowering unemployment. And if you look at the line of that trend, it just continues, right? It's, there's no adjustment, there's no change in those numbers. So 
what we found out is a lot of companies ended up using those tax breaks to go back and buy back stock and make themselves more stable as companies, which was a good thing to do. And they probably want to do that first and then pass it on. Um, but that was, that was what we really found out of what happened. Um, because I, I think part of that was just because there had been so much fluctuation in, in everything that had happened since the 2007 crisis, right? So businesses have been going and trying to increase and do better since 2007. And you ended up with the situation where we were just kind of ignoring certain things that were happening. We, we had more bubbles that were populating up in the economy. And b- even before the the COVID thing, we were starting to see cracks. We were starting to see the possibility of a recession happening. Uh, this idea that we were going to hit 4% GDP and just keep there, that never, that never came through. We we dropped down in GDP. We were never, I think we hit one quarter where we were above four and then dropped after that, right? So we were seeing little little issues that were bubbling up and bubbles that were going to end up exploding. And then I think COVID came along and gave everybody the excuse to go in and try to fix all of their companies to, to uh, eliminate all that. Yeah. All right. So um, we can, we can say, oh, we, we had this great economy and then COVID came and destroyed it. And I don't think that's really what history is going to bear out when you look at the numbers and how things really were progressing at that time. Uh, things were leveling off and things were, were caught. There were, there were cracks that were being exposed. Yeah. I think people uh, just, blame, I think people blame government shutdowns for mm-hmm. all of it. And that just isn't accurate. The reality is that the economy was softening and that there was going to eventually be a downturn. How many of these companies would have made it through a downturn at all? And the market was already changing its behavior due to a reaction. Like you had the NBA shut down, you had the NCAA shut down. It wasn't until like a week or two later that the government, that that Trump and the CDC, which really were the impetus for the government shutdowns across the nation, because Donald Trump gave cover to local and state governments to shut down. And that's when it really started to get implemented because, you know, San Francisco, I remember laughing at San Francisco going, oh, they don't even have a case. What are these idiots declaring an emergency for? You know, like everybody was beating up on those liberal politicians on the coasts who were doing shutdowns. Mm -hmm. It wasn't until Donald Trump gave everyone cover with his, you remember his little postcard, Donald Trump CDC guidelines. So it's hilarious to see so many people put faith in Donald Trump that he's going to fight the shutdowns when he literally sent us all a postcard taking credit for it. Like, <laughs> another one of those bullshit contradictions that, that he says one thing, or he does one thing and says another, and then everybody just buys it. Um, but the the markets were already starting to signal that they were going to make changes of some sort. Would the changes be as uneven, as deep, as long lasting, as punishing to certain industries? Absolutely not. Like there was going to be a market disruption because of the pandemic. That was always going to be the case. It is not 100% the government that caused restaurant workers or Live Nation employees to not work. It was always going to have some market impact. But the point is, is that without government intervention, it wouldn't have been uneven. It wouldn't have been as deep. It wouldn't be as long lasting. It wouldn't be as political. More people would cooperate because there wouldn't be the backlash and resentment because they're being forced to do something instead of persuaded. To me, that's the best argument for libertarians to make as opposed to COVID isn't real and you're all being a a sucker if you're wearing a mask and it's a hoax. Like the 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 market was going to change and some of these businesses were going to have trouble regardless, but it, you would have less joblessness and you wouldn't have an inflation of the currency because all of a sudden they're printing $12 trillion through the fed and Congress to, to hand out to, to whatever business they feel deserves it today. And, you know, while giving us a token $1,200. So the, the, the reality is there was always going to be somewhat of a downturn, but like every other downturn and economic cycle, it wouldn't be as severe and long lasting if it weren't for the federal government trying to centrally plan the economy and messing it up completely in the process. By or picking what was called, food. yeah, there, there was called a soft landing. That's what uh, <laughs> Greenspan was, was always uh, heralded for is he created a soft landing after 87 the 87 black monday blah 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 so um 
they thought, oh, he had done this. He had he had created this offline, but all he had done is take the problem and convert it into another area and created a, a bubble that ended up causing the 2007 problem, right? So yeah. it, it's just, you, you watch, so there's a great documentary, uh, uh, Money for Nothing, the uh, inside the Federal Reserve. And it really gives a great history from the Federal Reserve from the very beginning and how it got created all the way through to the 2007 um, collapse and how the Fed was really at the center of that. And it was actually at the center of all the great, you know, economic disruptions of the day because they didn't know what they were doing. They were trying to do something and they failed miserably. Stagflation in the 70s, you know, having to go off the gold standard. All of that was because of bad decisions on their part. And the first failure they had was their reaction to the um, the Great Depression and stock market crashes. So um, I, I recommend that movie very much, that documentary. But it's it's really telling to see how how much that manipulation that soft landing that everybody thought everybody thought that the numbers had proven right that we were able to mathematically figure out figure out debt and econo economics and the problem is is that people are involved and human nature is involved and when you try to mathematics something out that has human nature involved you have outliers and you have things that you're not going to see and you're not going to plan for and a lot of economy people and i see this a lot in, in libertarian circles too where people look at yeah <laughs> the, well not just economists but people who believe in the economics like economics is the basis for libertarianism people right right yeah. all libertarianism is is economics and that's it and it's like no there's human nature and people who act out of self-interest um and out of empathy and they and they and they don't just always act their, you know, a, a way you think that they should act. They're going to act differently in certain situations. So you can't math it out like that. You have to understand the nuances that happen in an economy that that you may not see ahead of time. And that was a big problem with with Greenspan is he didn't see the bubble, the, you know, the housing bubble. He didn't see it. He didn't see it as a problem. Right. He just figured housing is just going to get better and we just keep going. And it's never going to collapse. And then it collapsed. Um, they didn't see the inflation that was happening because they were tying the numbers, uh, the inflation numbers. They had changed the inflation numbers and how they were calculated to measure different things. And so they weren't capturing the information that they needed in order to make a better decision if they were going to centrally manage an economy like that. That's why it's always better to not centrally manage an economy to try to engineer soft landings and slow takeoffs and and even out all the the ups and downs of the market mm -hmm. because all they've done is create bigger booms and bigger busts yep. because of it yeah well, yeah yeah because yeah and it's easy to do the they believe they can do it with the stock market and stuff like that because they can see these figures and numbers and know that hey i put this here this does that what because that's so they can see they can see, they can see those numbers in their face, but you can't see the unseen numbers, which is Main Street, the yeah, small businesses, those different figures. Those figures come in much much later than when you've manipulated something and you, and you when you do different things. What with Reinhold, like just reinforcing what Reinhold said, it's like human beings react differently. Even though that hey, if I do this, if I do a, human should react B. Not necessarily. They could see it differently and go to D, F, and just say do, and we'll do what they want. 